Hi there, my name is Timothy Poitra, and I'm a technical writer on the OpenShift documentation team. Today I'm going to show you how quickly you can get a project and application up and running on OpenShift Enterprise version 3.2. Once you've ensured that you have everything you need to get started, it's time to fork the sample repository. Visit github.com slash openshift slash ruby hyphen ex, then click the fork button in the upper right corner. Choose your own user icon and you'll be taken to your new forked repository. Click Clone or Download. Then click the clipboard icon to copy the location to clone. Next, from the command line, navigate to the directory where you want the local clone to reside. Then type git clone and paste in the location you copied from GitHub. You'll likely need to authenticate and then your forked repository will be cloned to your local machine. Navigate into your new local repository, and you'll be back here later, so you can leave this window open. Now navigate to the web console. You're going to use the oclogin command to log in from the command line, but the simplest way to do that is by grabbing an authentication token. Click the question mark icon in the top right of the screen next to your username, then click About. Next, click to reveal the token, and copy the entire login command. Back on the command line, Paste the OC login command you copied from the web console and hit enter. Next, we'll create a project using the OC new project command. Paste in the example command from the OpenShift documentation and change the replaceables. Type a unique project name, a description of the project, and a display name that'll be used within the web console, then hit enter. The command automatically places you within your new project and you can see when we refresh the web console that your project has been created. Now we're ready to create an application. The OC new app command combines the Ruby builder image with the source from your forked repository. And here I'll type my GitHub username in the specified URL, which is the location of the repository we forked earlier. Hit enter and very quickly we see that OpenShift has begun the process of building. It'll first build the resources your application needs, and then the Ruby app itself. The Ruby application is being built via the OpenShift Source to Image Builder, which combines the provided source from your fork with the Ruby Builder image to create a new image where your application will run. OpenShift has located the Builder image, and this source build now has an image change trigger that will start a new build any time the Ruby Builder image is updated. It also creates all necessary resources, like image streams, a build config, deployment config, and service. It shows a status of success, but the actual build will take some time, so I've taken the liberty of speeding things up for this video. Let's follow along in the logs with this command. While you wait for the build to complete, you can see on the overview page of the web console that your build is definitely in progress. Once the build is successful, OpenShift pushes the resulting image into the registry, which can take some time. Now that the image is pushed, we see that the pod is up and running from the web console. However, the command line OC tool has plenty of ways to check in on your project. Run OC status to see the status of what you've just built in your new project. Next, we can run OC get pods to see the pods that are running or have already run. Here we see the build pod, which has completed its purpose, and the pod that is running our Ruby application. Running OC get builds shows us the duration of the build process and that it's complete. Next, we need to create a route. This is the external address that you use to access your application. Run OC expose service, followed by the name of your application, which in our case is Ruby hyphen EX. Afterward, we can run OC get route to see the route, which is also viewable from the web console. Copy it from the command line or click it from the web console to load your application in your web browser. We're going to change this title in the code, but first we'll set up a webhook so that when you push code changes to your fork, your application will automatically update. Back on the command line, we can take a peek inside the build config to verify that a GitHub webhook is configured, complete with a secret for additional security. You can also just run OC describe BC Ruby hyphen EX to see a summary of the build config. We need to copy this GitHub webhook payload URL. You can also grab it from the web console by clicking the browse tab, builds, your Ruby build, 
then the Configuration tab, where you click the clipboard icon to copy the address. Next, let's go back to our forked repository on GitHub. Make sure you're logged in, then click Settings, click Webhooks and Services, and then click Add Webhook. Paste the copied URL into the Payload URL field. Now a word of caution. In my test environment, I need to disable SSL, but I definitely do not recommend doing that. Next, click Add Webhook. GitHub will ping your OpenShift server to ensure that communication is successful and that your push notifications will get through. You can see here that mine is correctly configured. OK, now we are going to write a code change and push it to our fork. Edit the config.ru file with your favorite text editor. On line 229, you'll see the page title for the sample app. Modify the title and save your changes. Back on the command line, run git status to see your modified file. Add the changes and then make a commit. Run git status again to make sure you're clean and ready to push and then run git push. You'll likely need to authenticate and then your changes will be pushed to your fork. A few seconds later, the webhook trigger fires and a new build begins. The status will change from pending to running and eventually to completed. While it is running, you can click View Log from the Overview page to check on the progress of the new build. Once the build is complete, visit the web address for your application. If you loaded it previously, you may need to refresh the page. And here we see the changes we just pushed, which were triggered automatically by our webhook. This is a simple app, just a welcome screen with details about OpenShift, but this process allows you to develop your application and very quickly push your changes with the rest of the build process fully automated. Thank you for watching. I'll be creating some more videos for you in the near future.